To take a drawing from the state that it's currently in, where it's a basic object, to create an actual printed drawing sheet, we're going to move from the model to a layout environment. Now the layout environment provides us a little bit more control than printing just from what you can see on the screen here. When we choose layout, what it will do is it will provide us a sheet, a drawing sheet. Now you may not see your actual model inside the drawing sheet just yet, but let me explain what the sheet looks like, how to bring your drawing into the drawing sheet, which it's already there, you just can't see it. The actual sheet that you see is 8.5 by 11. We can change the size of this layout sheet, and that's right mouse clicking on layout 1. We can edit uh, the page setup manager and change the physical size of the white sheet of paper that you see on the screen. So if we're going to do a B size or a C size or a D size print, I want to make sure that that page setup manager is set up with the appropriate setting. And so layout 1 is the current layout. I want to modify it, let's say for example if I wanted to change to a different paper size. So I have to choose the printer plotter. If I say none, then it's going to give me the default of any size. If I have a specific plotter that's already attached to my computer, it will automatically uh, limit the types of printing that I can do. So none will give you the most choices. Now you can see that we have ANSI A, B, C, or architectural C, D, and E. And so you can choose either or, and this is paper sizes, um, basically metric English uh, type sizes. We also have ISO sizes, which are the metric uh, counterparts to the ANSI English sizes. In our drawing, it's 11 by 8.5. Horizontal X value is first. Second value is the Y. If we want to go portrait, this is called landscape. If we want to go portrait and stand it vertically, it would be 8.5 by 11. You don't have to touch anything else at this time. You know, basically it's going to be a landscape, 8.5 by 11. Plotting scale, don't worry about. We'll deal with that in a few minutes. It's always going to be 1 to 1, by the way. Um, and we'll choose OK. And that allows us to configure our drawing sheet. All I did was locate my A size printer. Um, and you'll notice that the dashed lines have changed position. And that dashed line is now way out on the outer border, which gives me a large printable area. Now the gridded area that's inside that gridded area is called a viewport. You can see that I'm highlighting the viewport on the screen. Now, that viewport is our window that we can see the objects that were in the model. And that's where the grid comes from. The grid is actually the same grid that's on the model sheet. And if we go back to model from layout one, you'll see that there's a grid behind my drawing. So what we're seeing is a portion of the grid what we're not seeing is the actual drawing. So before that, this viewport is actually a grippable object. So if I left mouse click it, I've got the ability to stretch this box. And here's a helpful tip. Stretch the box so that it stretches just beyond the dashed lines. That way the box itself will not print but the object will. Still, oh, there's a portion of my object here, I think. Okay, now how do we get the object to show up on the screen? The easiest way to remember how to do this process, uh, this layout setup, uh, basically what we did is we, our paper size is 8.5 by 11. I then stretch the viewport box just to the outer edges of the dashed line. And the third step is to use the Hokey Pokey. That's right, your song, the Hokey Pokey. Left foot in, left foot out, right foot in, shake it all about, that whole thing. 
So here's how it works. We double click in, we double click out. We double click in and we can shake it all about. Do the hokey pokey, spin yourself around. That's what it's all about. But here's the deal. When I double click out, you'll notice that I can highlight the box, but I don't see anything inside. If I double click in, I get more stuff inside, but I can't highlight the box. So here's how it works. If I double click inside, I'm theoretically inside the model environment. Remember what I mentioned before, if I roll the mouse, I can zoom in, zoom out, and if I double click, it'll zoom all. Well, double click on that wheel real quick, pick, pick. Bingo. I just made a zoom all. I magnified the object to fit the screen, and the screen happens to be my viewport window. If I roll the wheel, I can roll the wheel back so I can see the whole screen. If I hold the wheel down, I can move it in position. Boy, this looks great. I wonder what scale that is. Hmm. Does it really matter? As the, Minnesotans, as the Minnesotans would say, you betcha. It really does matter. Making a drawing look good and printing it, that's just one aspect. But realistically, when you're creating a drawing that is going to be used to reproduce a part or an object or a building, it's got to be true size. It's got to have a relationship to the scale factor. So how do we know what scale factor to, to work with? Well, remember we did the hokey pokey. We double clicked in, double clicked out. When we double click in, in the lower right hand corner of your screen, there's a scale factor. Right now, mine says 0 0.586140. Wow. That's not reproducible. I don't think I have a scale that is at 0 0.586140. But if I hit the arrow next to it, I bet I can find a scale that I do have. Like 1 to 1. That's true size. So let's, let's click 1 to 1. 1 to 1 true size. Guess what? My dimensions don't fit. So 1 to 1 is not going to work. But I could go maybe 1 to 2, which is half scale. And if you're an architect, you're going to be down here. 1 inch equals a foot, 3 quarters inch equals a foot, half inch, quarter inch equals a foot. Okay. If you're a civil engineer, you're going to be like 100 to 1, 10 to 1, 8 to 1, 1 to 100. Those are the different settings that you're going to be at. You can also even set up a custom scale. If you don't see what you would like, you can design your own. I'll choose half scale. Oh, yeah. Much better. Very clean, sharp looking. And I know it's accurate because it's one to two. So to get this, you double click in, change the scale, double click out left mouse click twice in the gray area. Notice that the large thick dark viewport window goes away. When you double click in you get the large thick viewport window. When you double click out it goes away. When it goes away you're now working on top of the sheet as opposed to in the model. And this is a benefit because I can put a title block on top of the sheet as opposed to putting a title block with the model. That used to be the old school method is we'd insert a title block along or part of the actual model in itself. But that didn't lend itself to being very well done when you get to scalability. Because then you gotta scale the title block along with the drawing and here the title block is separate from the drawing because the title block will be in a layout. Later on in the class, I'll give you a title block and we'll actually go through how to bring the title block in and so forth. But for now, what do I need you to do? I need you to create text. So we're going to choose multi-line text. You're going to pick a spot down here in the lower right hand corner where the title block typically would be and create a window. What do you need? Well, you definitely need your name. 
you need a date, you need the drawing name, and you need a scale. Those are the four key items that you need to make sure that is that is on your drawing environment. Typically your name, a date, drawing name, and a scale. Those are the four core items. When we get to more complex drawings, we'll actually have you use the title block. You'll fill the title block out with the same information, but you'll actually have it as a title block environment. But for now, for our basics, we pick the text, choose a window. All I did was hit the enter key to get to another line. When I'm done, I choose close text editor. So I'm done typing. I can close my text editor. How do I print it? I choose the print button. Where's the print button? Well, it's up here on the top row. Or I can choose the letter A. If I choose the letter A and choose print, it's going to give me the ability to, to plot my drawing. I know that I'm not using a plotter, I'm using a printer, but I can choose print. Shows you what my printer is, that it's letter size, scale's always going to be one to one, and I want to preview it. Well, theoretically, I've already got a preview of what I have on the screen, because that is a what you see is what you get print when you see it on the screen, because you know that that sheet size is 8.5 by 11. However, we, want to, we just want to double ch verify that it's going to print properly. So again, printer, paper size, plotter area is going to be the layout. We're going to plot the layout. Not the object, not the zoom, not the window, but the layout. Scales always one to one. We hit preview. There it is. That's exactly what it's going to look like. And the scale is one half scale. So if you were to actually take a ruler to it and measure that six and a half inch distance, that would be half that size or 3.25 inches on the drawing sheet because it is at half scale. How do I get out of this? I hit the escape key. Brings me back to the plot and I can save it. One of the things that I would like you also to do is export your drawing to a PDF and submit both the and if you're doing it as, a, as an online class you'll submit it as a PDF drawing and if you're doing it as a face-to-face -face, um, I'll collect them in class as a uh, physical print but even easier you can submit them electronically into the Dropbox as a PDF file the PDF will print exactly what you see I'll choose PDF it'll ask me where to save it You'll save it and work from there. Also provides the export information. What am I going to plot? The current layout, page setup is the current settings, and so forth. It'll be a PDF file. Again, the PDF is true scale. It shows that it's six and a half. If I were to actually measure it, it would be three and a quarter, be half the original size. That gives you the overall scope of our project of 1-17.